It's time to upgrade the, so I call it the home theater PC and everyone gets mad because it doesn't play movies. I never play movies on this. It's actually just my VR rig. And uh, yeah, so it's time for an upgrade. Most people would say the components in here are good enough. And to that I'd say, Sick and tired of all the RGB craze? Well, don't worry because the EVGA Z270 Classified K is full of all the things that matter, like Intel Optane Memory Ready, U.2 NVMe SSD support, 11 phase PWM for stable overclocking, and a sleek monochromatic design that is perfect for any build. Learn more by visiting EVGA.com. It's a 4770K with a Z97 M Power motherboard, and it's got 16 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance. Um, DDR3, Gemini cooler on there with a fractal fan, sitting in a Node 605 case, which is very nice. It's a brushed aluminum, looks good. We've also got a Cooler Master 750M power supply. Obviously, you can see it's not a full sleeved. Doesn't matter because you can't see inside this case anyway. Been kind of torn though on what I want to go with. I mean, I know I want to go with the 1080 Ti because again, this is a VR machine and I want to get all the horsepowers for the VR because we want to maintain that 90 hertz refresh rate as much as possible. I took out my Toshiba hard drive because I want to go pure SSD only. I thought we'll throw all of these SSDs in there. No, I'm just kidding. I haven't decided which SSD I want to go with. Can't decide if I want to go with an M.2 drive or if I want to go with a SATA drive. M.2 would definitely be simpler, that's for sure. And here's the thing, I couldn't decide what I wanted to go with. So I have got, this is the Z270 Gaming K6. You guys saw me do a little review on this when I did the 7600K and 7700K build. And this has an i5 7600K in it right now. But I also have this guy, the X299 Gaming i9 from ASRock, which would obviously be extreme overkill. But I don't know if how overkill I wanna go on this. See, I'm torn because I know the audience expects like super overkill things from me. But at the same time, I'm trying to be reasonable with this. Now I wouldn't put an i9 in there, of course. I definitely wouldn't put an i9 in there. Um, I would consider maybe doing the 7740X, which is, you guys know, the, uh, the stupidest processor ever to belong on an X299 gaming, or an X299 motherboard. But I'm kind of, I think, okay with that. But the problem is if I go with the i9 motherboard, the X299, then we have to take a road trip to somewhere to buy a cooler, and we're kind of short on time today. Because uh. we don't have a cooler that's gonna fit in here. Like I said, everything. Well, it's my fault if <laughs> I, I didn't, I don't know where the mounting hardware is for this Gemini. And I have very limited clearance height wise on this. But I kind of, I've kind of been in this position like, what am I going to do with the 7740X? It's like, what am I going to do with that? Even Paul's hardware, you guys, I'll link it in the description of this video if I remember. If not, just go to Paul's hardware's web, uh, web, YouTube webpage. He did a very good video comparing and contrasting the things that you gain and the things that you lose when you go with the 7740X on an X299 motherboard. It's stupid. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. So I figured, let's just continue the trend of not making sense by putting it in an HTPC case. But again, I don't have a cooler that fits it. This is probably the only time in history you'll ever hear me say ketchup and mustard cables are okay. And I should flip around the power supply now though, because I've been taking the filters out. No. See, there, people get all mad, like, why do you put the power supply with the fan facing up? Well, I did it in this case because these, these grills right here on the 605 are extremely restrictive. You see how small the holes are? And then there's a filter inside of that that looks like this. So this extremely fine and dusty mesh, as you can see, I mean, clearly it does its job, but this extremely fine mesh is on the underside of this extremely fine grill. So it really cuts off airflow a lot. So that's why I took the fan filters out of this side for the intake fans. Uh, you can kind of see the blades through there now. So I think I've opened up the airflow quite a bit. I, uh, I use double-sided tape for everything. I've done this before where I've accidentally pulled the cover right off of an SSD because it, We're good. We're, We're fine. Good. Okay. Whew. Jeez. That was quite violent. <laughs> it just like popped right off there, don't you know? <laughs> I don't even care if that looks like that because like I said, this is one of the fun builds because you don't have to care about what it looks like. You don't see inside at all. Just hide it all. You don't see inside. The thing that sucks about this is you know what all the comments next are gonna be? Uh, give away, give away. Are you giving away the 4770? Oh, are you giving oh, it oh. away? Oh, part out? Are you giving it away? Are you part giving out? away a part out? You parting part out? Free? Give away, worldwide part giveaway? Out? Yeah. People demand giveaways because they're so convinced they're gonna win. They're just feeling lucky that day. I'm already doing a giveaway right now anyway of a graphics card, so. There we go. 
I don't like picking it up by the cooler, but it's not like I can get my hands behind it in this case. I kind of want to do the i5, but then I, the problem is I sort of know the i5 is going to slow down a 1080 Ti a little bit. Uh, mm, this is going to spend pretty much most of its life right now doing VR stuff anyway, which is not going to max out even something like a 1080 Ti. But there are gains to be had in VR with going with the big overpowered gra graphics cards. I can't just throw that cooler on the X299 board because like I said, I don't have the hardware for it. But I hit up my friends over at Cooler Master, they stepped up and we're driving over there right now and they're gonna give me a new S534 cooler, the Gemini, because it's a horizontal cooler, it clears, it does a good job at cooling, so I wanted to stick with that. So, what I've decided I'm gonna do is I'm going to go with the X299 7740X because I can't think of any other build to use that CPU with. I already have it and why spend money on a 7700K when I at least have that sitting around. And then I won't have to see it, right? Because it's gonna sure. be in that case, I don't have to look at it. I don't have to look at it and go, what, what's really a waste here is the motherboard. The X299 motherboard is a complete waste on a 7740X because that CPU should never exist to begin with. Does that mean we get to race cars again? Finally get to race cars again. I finally have a reason to actually get my other build going then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But so anyway, yeah, we're, we're gonna drive over to Cooler Master right now is what we're gonna do. <laughs> Just got back from Cooler Master. <laughs> oh my gosh. I waited for that turn to be perfectly timed. Oh. Yeah, we, we got what we need now. Show them. We got it. We got, we got another cooler, the exact cooler we had. Yeah, there you go. Sorry, my arms are like weird. I'm actually not even going to be using that exact cooler right now. Uh -huh. I'm going to be using just the hardware out of it. Oh. We got ourselves something I haven't had in a long time, some Yoshinoya. You like Japanese fat food? Yeah. Mmm, broccoli. The teriyaki chicken's pretty good. So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, okay, now, if you want to know what that was all about, I'm going to leave this in as I tell them, don't start every clip with, so anyway, or so, or <laughs> hey guys, or okay guys, because that's what like beginners do. That's what begin beginners go, okay guys, okay guys, sup guys, like every single time they start a clip. So I'm always telling them like, dude, don't start every clip with, okay so, or whatever, right? <laughs> Yeah. And then he just started to do it right now and he caught himself and that's what the blah, 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 was because he was giving himself an aneurysm to stop. <laughs> I forced an aneurysm. Who knew? <laughs> ah, ah, no. Yeah, I do. I haven't used this camera in forever. Let's just go put the computer together. That yeah, sounds like a good, good idea. So, moral of the story: don't throw away your hardware, your mounting hardware, when you think you're done with it. And he, she is. Now, the cool thing about this particular case is it does indeed fit EATX. Uh, motherboards. This is not an EATX motherboard, but it does fit it if I want it. So there it is. Look how pretty that is. So pretty. It's all like gunmetal-y and stuff. Transformer-like. Looks nice. Okay. Yeah. Look at all these M.2 slots we got. So much room for activities. Wow. I'm gonna put... So, okay, that, that makes up my mind. I'm gonna put an M.2 right here. Because the nice thing about the Gemini and the way that it blows down is it will, it, it will cool the M.2. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that that's the 7740X. Uh, 3.3, yep, that's the 10 core right there. Now it's a total waste because we can only use this RAM, this RAM slots right there. Well, that's kind of a bummer. Clickety-clack. And I'm pretty sure that this is going to clear the cooler. I don't have any, I don't have any real concerns about that. Let's see, oh yeah, lots and lots of room to clear, look at that. No problem. Okay, so I'm going to use my 960 Evo M.2. This kind of just looks like a really futuristic cityscape. Mm -hmm. if you just, you know, skyscraper on top of a skyscraper. Leave me alone. What are you doing? I got the wrench stuck on it. <laughs> you want to show, show us? I dropped it when it was in there. And now it's like... Can't get it off of there. I'll figure it out later. So I was doing a test boot on this, as you should always do before you put it inside the system. Obviously it's working. We've got a test boot right here. 
And these two dims on the right hand side are occupied. I could try switching them to see if there's any difference. Because technically I don't have A and B. I have C and D occupied. I don't know if there's a difference again. Yeah, but... I, I guess we have to put it back in the, in the system now, or in the case. Yeah. Might as well. Capacity. Sorry, I tried to do an accent, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what Capacity. accent was that? I'm a little curious. Like a, like a, a mobster. Hey, yo, Vinny, you believe this guy? He thinks he's talking about capacity, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, you nailed it. I'm gonna shut up now, dick. Ah, shit. Oh, what do you do now? Well, the eight pin power, right, right down there. It goes like against where the fan is. Power plug is hitting on a fan. I'm about to do some modifications. Yeah, so it keeps hitting on the corner of this fan, the power plug. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna break the corner of this fan off. There's lots of excess. Look at that technique. Well, there's lots of excess plastic and material on here. So now there's gonna be a lot more clearance right there. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> Modded. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the way that this cable has to route. But. I can't do anything about that because the PSV I'm using has short cables. About to get a modded SSD. Well, I mean, if it even works, the best modders out there, if they say they don't use double-sided tape, I would say you're a liar. Double-sided tape is in every single modder's like toolkit. I guarantee it. 24 pin. It's, it's in. It's mm -hmm. in. Wow. You know this? You did. Damn. What? It's so much cleaner than what we started with. <laughs> I know, huh? You guys might have noticed I've been showing y'all a Founders 1080 Ti here as I've been talking about all this crap. But that's not, what, not what's going in here. No. It's not? No, it's not. What's going in it? I'm actually going to be putting in an MSI 1080 Ti Seahawk. Ooh. And what I did with this guy here, because I kind of did a test fit yesterday to see if I could fit the AIO in here. And it was hitting on this hinge. There's a hinge in here. I don't know if you can see that. There's a hinge right there. And you can see how close that is to the fan. Even if I had the fan on there, the radiator would still hit on that. Nice. So what I did was I took another fan and I basically hollowed it out. I took the hub out and I took the fan blades out. So now I have this kind of a shroud. And then I just literally, I know it's ghetto modded, but it's zip tied to the fan. And now it will all fit. So I guess that's the next thing I gotta do is get this in there. Cause if I'm gonna be routing cables around. Might as well see if it fits. Yeah. And I was kind of concerned about the vertical height too. But yeah, I, it does all fit fortunately. I think you're in the clear. So by not putting the filters on the exhaust side, like I kind of showed you guys earlier, this increases the airflow. And so we get nothing but good things. Yeah, so technically you have the water cooled and it's the issue cool. I was finding with this case was uh, it, it can get a little toasty, even for a Founders Edition card. We have a water cooled GTX 1080 Ti, an X299 with the shouldn't exist 7740X KB Lake X processor. <laughs> now I'm almost positive that USB is for the card reader because USB 3.0 is, is the only USBs on there. So. Okay. And because of our video where we determined that having two separate plugs plugged in matters, well, a little bit, negligibly. 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 Like just a smidge, so it's not Negligibly. Noticeable. I mean, it's not gonna really hurt performance, really, but I still care. You want that peace of mind? I scare because I care. <laughs> it's not like this is the hardest chassis to build in. I think we got it pretty good, though. It's pretty open in there, right? Yeah. You know what we gotta do next? We gotta power, power it on. It Make sure it all works. We got to, got to throw the juice on it. Whoa, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, what'd you just, look at that. Look at that. Would you just believe it? How much air is coming out of here? Oh, wow. Yeah, no. That's a lot. That's way more air than it's ever gone through this chassis. Wow. So I think some of the thermal things that we were kind of fighting with initially in the beginning, which kind of led to all of this, are now working. So anyway, there you go, guys. Tell me what you think about this build. I couldn't think of another, of a better way to take a CPU that didn't make sense and put it into a build that kind of doesn't make sense. I mean, who would have thought of putting an X299 in a home theater PC chassis 
with a water-cooled graphics card and called it a VR machine. It is a VR machine. I know, that's really all it's gonna do. Yeah. But tell me down in the comments below what you guys think. And yes, I know you probably want to see benchmarks and stuff. Um, I just got done building it. So <laughs> Calm that's, down. it's going to take some time. <laughs> Chill. Patience. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.